Hey everyone, it's Mr. Vargas here, uh, checking in on homework assignment 4.3, and this has to do with functions, and you can find this on page 291 of your course textbook. Your homework assignment is to complete all seven problems. I'm going to run through a few of these problems just to give you kind of a foundation so that you can complete the rest. Here we go, let's check out number one. Number one has this notation or this writing, f of 7 if f of x equals 5 times x or 5x. So here they're asking us to find each function value. And we spoke earlier today and yesterday about how a function is kind of like a machine. You plug something in and out comes something else most of the time. So here we're actually going to take this function called f and we are going to plug in the number 7 wherever we see an x into our rule with 5x being our rule. 7 is going to be our input here which we're plugging in for x. f is going to be the name f of x as an entirety is going to be your output. So input, output, and here's your rule, 5x. So let's just go ahead and substitute. f of 7 is going to be equal to, let me go back, f of 7, I highlighted that in blue, just to be a little bit more clear. And that is going to substitute into that x right there, 5 times 7. And 5 times 7 is 35. So f of 7, in this case, is equal to 35. Not bad, not too bad. Let's go ahead and check out number 3 really quick. All right, number three, we've got f of four if f of x equals three x minus one. Okay, very similarly, we are taking this input of four, plugging it into our machine here. Wherever we see x, we're going to replace it with four in our rule, and that's gonna come out with the new output for us. So here we go, f of four, is equal to 3 minus 1 and once again we're going to just take this 4 right here and substitute it in wherever we see that x and that is going to mean f of 4 produces 12 minus 1 which is equal to 11 okay So we took an input, and it resulted in an output. In particular, we took the input of 4, plugged it into our machine, and out came 11. This notation can take some time getting used to, this whole f of, f parentheses stuff. But the more exposure you get, the easier it will become, I promise. All right, let's take a look at number 5. And then that will be it for today. Here we have, choose four values for x to make a function table for each function, then state the domain and range of the function. Okay, so let me make that table really quick. And we've got x here. This is going to be our inputs. And f of x is going to be our outputs. And that's this. All right. And then our rule for number 5 is 5 minus 2x. This is our rule. Okay. 
And written succinctly up here, they tell you it's f of x equals 5 minus 2x. All right, we can create four values for x. So let's pick easy numbers. I like easy numbers. You don't have to make it too challenging on yourself. So here we go. I'm going to pick, let's start with negative 2, negative 1. 0 and 1. That's perfectly acceptable. So what happens is we take that rule 5 minus 2x and we are going to replace that x with our input. Here it's negative 2. We can do the same thing all the way down with our different inputs. Here it's negative 1. Here it's going to be 0, and the last case it is positive 1. Okay, all you have to do now is evaluate each of those individual expressions, and you will get a resulting f of x, or an output. Okay, so when I plug in negative 2 here, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, 5 plus 4 would be an output of 9. All right, next one. I've got negative 1 times negative 2. That would be positive 2. Positive 2 plus that 5 gets you a 7. All right, this one's my favorite right here. 2 times 0, or negative 2 times 0, is just going to be 0. And you are only left with that 5 there. All right, and last one. We plugged in 1 to our function, into our rule, and we get negative 2 times 1, which is negative 2. 5 minus 2 will get you 3. And we can kind of see a pattern developing here. This is a linear function, so it does have a constant rate of change. In particular, we're losing 2 every time we increase by 1 over here. So for every input we increase 1, our output decreases by 2. And that's just a little extra. You don't need to include that in your homework. All right, so go ahead and state the domain and range of the function. So my domain would be everything that I inputted. So I'll do that in blue. And that was negative 2, negative 1. 0 and 1, and then my range is going to be all of my outputs that I got. And your answers may vary here based on what numbers you chose to plug in for x. Your answers will vary, but this is just what happens when I plugged in some really easy numbers, negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1. All right, I hope this helped. And good luck on the rest of the assignment. See you tomorrow.